Hello and welcome to Quotes This Week on Live Law. I am Tanya Pandey and I am here with our latest update of last week's important judgments from courts across India. We will begin the episode with judgments from the Supreme Court and then cover high courts and other courts. A two-judge bench of the Supreme Court has delivered a split verdict on the issue whether Section 155, Subsection 2 of the Code of Criminal Procedure will apply to the investigation of an offence under Section 23 of the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act, that is the POCSO Act 2012. As per Section 155, Subsection 2, a police officer cannot investigate a non-cognizable offence without the order of a magistrate, whereas Section 23 of the POCSO Act relates to the offence of disclosure of the identity of the victim of the sexual offence. In this case, the accused had committed the offence under Section 23 CRPC by publishing the identity of a 16-year-old victim of a sexual offence. He then sought discharge before the magistrate on the ground that the police registered the FIR without following Section 155-2 CRPC. The magistrate dismissed his application. He filed an application under Section 482 CRPC before the High Court against this order, which was also dismissed. He then moved the Supreme Court. Justice Indira Banerjee held that the magistrate's permission was not needed for the police to investigate the offence under Section 23 POCSO Act, whereas Justice J.K. Maheshwari held otherwise. In view of the split verdict, the matter has been referred to the Chief Justice of India to constitute an appropriate bench to resolve the issue. The Supreme Court on 24th March opined that the parameters to be considered by the Caste Scrutiny Committee to verify the caste certificate needs to be decided by a larger bench. Observing that two judgments rendered by the division bench of the Apex Court have set out different parameters for the verification of caste certificates, a bench of Justices Heman Gupta and V. Ramasubramanian referred the issue to be authoritatively decided by a three-judge bench. The Supreme Court on 25th March upheld the Kerala High Court's order, wherein it was observed that complaint filed by the State Secretary of the RSS against a defamatory article published in a newspaper about the RSS is maintainable under Section 499 of the Indian Penal Code. The bench of Justices Dinesh Maheshwari and Anirudh Bose upheld the decision while considering an SLP. The court noted that Section 199 of the CRPC contains a ban that no court shall take cognizance of the offence of defamation except upon a complaint made by some persons aggrieved by the offence. The bench noted that RSS is a definite and identifiable body and any individual member of RSS has a locus standi to maintain a complaint against an article defaming the organisation. The Supreme Court, while dismissing an appeal against an order passed by the Securities Appellate Tribunal, explained the scope and ambit of statutory appeal under Section 15 capital Z of the SEBI Act 1992. In this case, the Securities Appellate Tribunal set aside the order passed by SEBI, restricting the respondent company from accessing the capital market for one year and further restraining the promoter directors from buying, selling or otherwise dealing with securities for India. SEBI had held that the company violated the provisions of the SEBI Act and the prohibition of fraudulent and unfair trade practices relating to securities market regulations 2003. The Supreme Court has observed that a High Court cannot direct regularization of temporary employees by creating supernumerary posts. The bench of Justices M.R. Shah and B.V. Nagaratna observed that such a direction to create supernumerary posts is unsustainable and wholly without jurisdiction and set aside the Gujarat High Court's direction to the state to consider the cases of some temporary employees for regularization sympathetically and, if necessary, by creating supernumerary posts. The Supreme Court on 25th March directed the petitioner to file a review before the Allahabad High Court in a plea assailing the order of the High Court, wherein the challenge to the constitutional validity of the PM Cares Fund and PM National Relief Fund in light of the Disaster Management Act had been rejected. A bench of Justices L. Nageshwar Rao and B. R. Gavai noted that all the issues raised in the writ petition had not been considered by the High Court. Let us now go over important judgments from the High Courts and other courts. In a significant judgment, the Karnataka High Court has rejected a petition 
filed by a husband seeking to drop charges of rape under Section 376 of the Indian Penal Code, levelled against him by his wife. Justice M. Nagaprasanna did not accept the husband's argument that the charge cannot be framed against him due to the exception of marital rape from the offence of rape, as per Exception 2 to Section 375 of the Indian Penal Code. The court observed that the exemption cannot be absolute. It was also observed that the exemption to marital rape is regressive and would run counter to the principle of equality enshrined under Article 14 of the Constitution of India. The Andhra Pradesh High Court has observed that High Court cannot issue writs under Article 226 of the Constitution challenging the orders of the Labour Court as it is a civil court and only supervisory jurisdiction under Article 227 can be exercised. The court relied on the 1998 judgment in the case of State of Maharashtra versus Labour Law Practitioners Association in which the Supreme Court ruled that the Labour Court performs judicial functions and is a court and decides disputes that are civil in nature. The bench of Chief Justice P.K. Mishra and Justice M. Satyanarayan Murthy dismissed the writ appeals as intra-court appeal under Article 227 of the Constitution was not maintainable. While dealing with the public interest litigation, the Kerala High Court has directed the concerned authorities to take steps to reconstitute the Local Complaints Committee established under the Sexual Harassment at Workplace, Prevention, Prohibition and Redress Act 2013 whenever its term expires. A division bench of Chief Justice S. Mani Kumar and Justice Shaji P. Chali disposed of a PIL noting that the provisions of the Act were to be strictly implemented. It was further clarified that sufficient publicity shall be made to the respondents regarding the constitution of the Local Complaints Committee in contemplation of the provisions of the 2013 Act and Rules. The Allahabad High Court has observed that the market value of a property for the purpose of Section 47 Capital A of the Indian Stamp Act has to be determined with reference to the use to which the land is capable reasonably of being put to immediately or in the proximate future. It may be noted that where it is found that an instrument is undervalued, which is what happened in the instant case, the procedure has been set forth under Section 47A of the Act for assessing the correct stamp duty on the instrument. A Delhi court on 24 March denied bail to student activist Omar Khalid in connection with the case alleging larger conspiracy into the Delhi riots of 2020 involving charges under the Indian Penal Code and Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Khalid was arrested on 13 September 2020. Additional sessions judge Amitabh Bhavat pronounced the order after reserving it earlier this month. The Delhi bench of National Company Law Tribunal consisting of PSN Prasad as judicial member and Rahul Bhatnagar as technical member has admitted the plea of Union Bank of India over non-payment of dues by Supertech and appointed Hitesh Goel as the interim resolution professional IRP The NCLT declared moratorium in terms of section 14 of the code and further directed the IRP to make public announcement immediately With this we've come to the end of today's episode To continue staying updated about all the legal developments happening in India subscribe to Live Law and click the bell icon to not miss any videos from us I am Tanya Pandey and you're watching Courts this week have a great day Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law